All right, back to my hole. And you can see I'm working on a, another jug there. Just pulled out a uh, one of those twist neck whiskey bottles with a spiral shoulder on it. Not embossed, but it's hand blown and three part mold. Anyway, a couple other little bottles here, nothing much, but let me see if we can get that jug out. Oh, we got it on camera here. So far, it looks good. Unless it's crusted iron. Work around it a little bit. That's a little bottle. Looks like right behind it here. Let's see if we can get that one out of there. Oh, it's a little, it's a little slick. It's got the stuff in it though. <laughs> kind of an orange gooky looking stuff. Have to be careful with that. Alright. Get under it. Crusted iron there. Looks like it was maybe in a bucket at one time. Well, there it comes. Alright. Temp rolling out. That looks good. Yep, another jug. There it is. <laughs> Unembossed, but it's a nice old one gallon white whiskey jug. So, all right, set that back off to the side over here. If there's anything behind it, sometimes there is. Yeah, that's metal. I've had the worst day for metal, so is Paul. What's going on with that? They've both been hitting so much metal today. Roofing. Just days like that. It's part of the dump. That's what it is. <laughs> Shouldn't be too surprised. And whatever they threw away. Oh, there's, a, oh, there's a jar. All right, that's a good one. That's a keeper. An economy. Yeah, I haven't been finding many jars, so kind of nice to get one there. Economy with the 1903. Patent date on the bottom of it. Kerr Glass Manufacturing Company. Patented June 9th, 1903, Portland, Oregon, something like that. Nice little pint size, yay. Those take a tin lid, which the tin dissolves, obviously, from being in the ground. But... Okay, I'm going to be digging out some stuff here. I got two or three bottles exposed, so I decided to turn the camera on in case it hits something good. There's a little miniature whiskey or something. Uh, nothing on it. We're hitting some of these over there on the other side. Nice little hand blown and mold miniature whiskey bottle. Okay. And there's another one down there. Big rocks and bricks. Ah, I have to take a little bit of that one. Next whiskey for beer. There's one up. Yeah. No, I said anything. It's broken there. There's another dark colored one right there. I don't know if you can see it. There's one right up here. Oh, it's cracked. I'm going to keep that one. Oh, there's another jug. Right there, that white thing you see is a jug. I was actually going for that bottle, which is broken, but maybe the jug will be here. <laughs> Boy, it's been a day of jugs. I don't know how many we've gotten. Four or five, anyway. I think we got five last time. Didn't we get five jugs last time? <laughs> oh, look at Bay. Bay up there. Hey, girl. <laughs> hey, girl. What are you doing? <laughs> She's watching. <laughs> anyway, there's that jug. Let's see if we can pull that one out. I like to undermine them. Oh, it's coming out of there. Uh-oh. More very small, too, I think. All right, it's good. Nice little jug. Like a little half gallon. I think we're getting ready to have a, have a cave-in, though, so I better get this out of here. I think it's... Okay, a couple more bottles sticking out in here. Actually, about three or four. One, two, three, four. Hope you can see those. Let's start in here. Well, one of them bites the dust, but another one from underneath there. There's an amber beer underneath that or something. Let's take this one. Oh, it's broke. 
amber beer and it's a slick oh ain't that a shame well let's set it back here's another beer aqua beer and that one's a slick wf and s milwaukee on the bottom all right let's see what that one is well, that's an amber vinyl tell by the shape of it we find them and here it's cod liver oil nice old one though hand blown kind of a dark amber yeah let's say 1899 on the bottom of it so I always like finding those those are cool all right well that was all the bottles it didn't take very long to get those there. but there's another one underneath there and it looks like maybe a jug there yeah looks like another jug sticking out in there man it's just been full of jugs i can't believe it incredible let's see what that bottle is underneath it we have to turn the camera off to get the work around because there's a big chunk of iron some kind of iron frame thing here oh that's a nice little pickle bottle that's a hand blown in mold clear pickle all right that's nice because that one will turn amethyst Okay. Oh, there's another. Uh, well, no, it's broken. It's a big broken piece of one. In there. Oh, there's a lot of jugs in here, though. That was a big one. That was part of that big salt glaze. Trying to hit her right there. Now there's something though. There's something going on. You probably can't see it. There's a big iron frame here. And it's stuck in there, so. Let's see what this one is before we turn the camera off. It's a big bottle. Not sure what it is. Oh, it's a whiskey. <laughs> I was hoping it was some kind of a big mineral water. But it's a whiskey. We'll take it. Okay. Right close to the bottom here. There's still a lot of trash there. Yeah, clay there at the bottom. Another bottle here. Looks like it maybe. Something glass. Yeah. And a little bottle, like a food bottle. Hand blown in mold like a cherries bottle. I call them cherries. Could have had some other relish or oh it says Heinz on the bottom, so that's kind of cool. Yay. Got Heinz. Oh, that jug's broken. This is just a teaser. Whole bottom's out of it. <laughs> That's all right. Oh, there's a big old bone. Look at that thing. Whew. That's some good. Yeah. All right, we got to get this big iron thing out of here. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was an amber. Looks like. Nope, oh, it's a case of gin. All right. Well, I'm gonna turn the camera off for a while again. I gotta go see how Paul's doing. All right, here's Paul over here. He's going to town. Look at all the stuff he's pulled out. Yeah, I did a hutch. Hey, you did? Hutch. Where's that from? It's from Bloomington, Illinois. Oh, It's got right. an anchor and it's anchor on the front. Oh, yeah. It looks pretty good. Yeah, that's a nice one, Paul. Still got the stopper yeah, in. I hit some nice ink bottles. I hit oh. like five or six clear. Ooh, look at this one. That's a nice clear one. Clear ink bottles. That one's aqua, but it's yeah, pen nice. rest. Pinrest ink, yeah. It's one of them Carter's 1897 that's clear. Oh, cool. Some other clears. Boy, look at all that. Oh, I'm just starting to hit into it, but I'm getting wore out. Yeah, me too. I moved a lot of dirt. Yeah, well, we had to chop but a lot. I'm just hitting into what looks like a really good area. But all right. It's really deep. Look at that. You are down in there, man. It's underneath that crusted layer. Yeah, that's a nice ink, Paul. Number 5 Sanford, patent 1892. And it's got that offset neck, pin rest. <laughs> There's something big cobalt. Oh, yeah. I got distracted here. H. Kwozik, trademark, Bl Bloomington, Illinois. Yeah, with the anchor on it, Navy anchor. Ooh, it's got the anchor on the bottom, too. That's nice. Mug base, yeah, that's a good hutch, man. We don't get many hutches out of we here. We don't. We don't get many hutches, so we're happy when we hit them. The bottom to a jug, but 
It's a hole. It's way, way back there. Oh, works malted milk. And them inks. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you hit some stuff here. We're not done yet, man. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah, several inks there. Boy, a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. I hit a couple more over there. Another jug. Another jug? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good down in there. Oh, there's a broken milk. Aww. We don't hit many milks. Yeah, that was a big quart, but I don't know yeah. what it was. It's mostly too old for milks, but we do hit the older ones. You know, the ones before 1920. All right, well, he's chopping away back in there. We're, the sun's starting to go down. We're both getting tired because we had to chop through a lot of metal and crusted roofing tar. And <laughs> takes a lot out of you going through that great big iron bar. Oh, yeah. But well, holler at me before you chop into all this upper stuff. I'd like to record that. If you get to that point. Okay, which which upper part? Back up in here. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I got different layers. Yeah, on. you do got layering in here. I'd like to get what I can under here since yeah. it's not at risk at this falling in. So That's a good idea. There's a good vein under here. Man, there is. Just milk that all you can. Catch up. Another catch up. You know, this. Shelly and I hit three of them last time. Look at the bottom. Make sure. Uh, say last time we got three of them that were embossed on the bottom. That uh, was a grape juice bottles from Michigan. Oh, cool. Yeah, it looked just like that. That one's unembossed. But at least you're hitting a lot of bottles. Oh, there was a nice sample. Wow. Food, the top's gone. That'd been nice. A little condiment bottle. Oh man. Some cloth down there. Some kind of old rags or something. That's the way mine's good, right down to the bottom. Okay, well, I'm going to get back over there. I'm the same way. I'm trying to finish mine up. Probably about another half hour, maybe 40 minutes. We can break out the lights. <laughs> yeah. It's not too cold. That's a good thing. I know. It's supposed to get down real cold here by Christmas Eve, like down in the 10 degrees or something. All right. Walk over here. There's that was so cool. There's that Shelly. Was She's... Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. A gourd or something. Yeah, a gourd. Big gourd. Shelly's over here uh, cleaning stuff up. Bay's down there keeping an eye on things. She's watching just in case. What's going on down there? Oh, she's got herself a stick now. What do you got? You give me that stick. I want that. That's my stick. I want that stick. You bring me that stick now. <laughs> give me that stick. I want it. She's having a great day. She's just having fun. <laughs> Jelly's over here and, and doing a lot of cleaning, huh? Some wire. Oh good, I always like keeping that wire. <laughs> we dug a couple holes up in here. Actually there was a big one underneath here. I filled in from that other hole, threw dirt in there. You never know it now. But... Alright. Going back over here for one last shot before it gets dark. So hang tight with us. We're, We're not done yet, are we? <laughs> Another hole down there. Working on another jug here. <laughs> Boy, we found jugs today. No shortage of them. 
the way it goes in this dump, it seems like they rolled down this hill. Digging around it here. A big, I don't know what that is, a pot or something on the other side of that. Bucket maybe, granite or bucket. want to be careful especially up here where the handle hopefully the handle is there somewhere I don't see it so it might not have a handle on it there's a bottle over here next to it okay it's just about ready to come out I think there it comes oh let me get my shovel up here it looks good yeah there's a handle alrighty Nice one, another gallon size jug. Ain't that something, all these jugs. I don't know how many that is today, but yeah. All right, let's uh, set that over here. And right back in here is another bottle. Let's see if, see if we can show that one there. What you can see a little bit there. Oh, there's a broken jug up above that. It's just a whiskey bottle. Just a whiskey bottle, but oh, it's a little different shaped one. It says picks. Picks on the bottom. It's hand blown in the mold. Alright, let's keep going. Any more little goodies in there. More little treasures. Come to Papa. There's one sticking out in there. Oh, it's broke. Right on the bottom of this dump. Yeah. You never know what's going to be in there. Just hit a really good broken fruit jar here a second ago. Would have been. I think it would have said all right. It is broke. Never found the lid either. But it may be in here yet. Maybe there's some more of them. If they liked them. That's a big, big broken one there. Broken jug. Granite there. Oh boy, here we go with the buckets again. <laughs> Lots of buckets. Sometimes they cry out, sometimes they don't. There's something. Something goes back in there. Can't see what it is now. Oh, there it is. It looks like a, looks like a blob top back in here, maybe. Hopefully. Looks like maybe a blob top beer. I don't know if you can see that back in there or not. Can you see that way back in there? Look at that blob beer. It's wedged in between a couple bricks, so I've got to be careful of that one. In between a bunch of iron. Oh, boy. Hope we can get it out without too much trouble. There it comes out. There's a, there's a brick right up above it. There it comes. Let's see what it is. It is a slick. Can you believe it? No, it's not. But it's Chicago. <laughs> Might as well be a slick from Chicago. Nah, there's some good bottles from Chicago. Uh, I can't quite focus my eyes on it. Him? Hmm. No, can't quite read it. Something in Gabler Brewery, Chicago. And it's got a crack in the lip anyway, so. Oh well, let's uh, clean out some more dirt here. There's a couple more little bottles sticking out in here. I'm kind of knocking them the wall a little bit. Getting close to time to go home. There's a big old coal clinker there. <laughs> Yeah, they burnt coal. That one looks like a soda. It looks like a whiskey flask and maybe a soda. So, I don't I have much hope for the whiskey. They're almost always unembossed. That's no exception. Maybe the soda. There's a doorknob. A white doorknob. Soda. I think it's broke. Ah, top's gone off of it. Yep. Too bad. 
It's toast. All right. All right, hitting a... Whoa, whoa. Gonna knock that thing out. There must have been a couple bottles in that bucket there. Yeah, they're both ketchups. <laughs> a couple ketchup bottles in that bucket. I was just knocking it back to get it out of the way. There's a square up in here. It looks like a... Probably just a gin bottle or something, but... Never know. Bitters, I, it's kind of hard to judge the size sometimes on things. How big around they are. Yeah. Let's just see if we can get it. Oh, it's a gin. Oh, it's a nice gin, though. Yeah, that's a nice bottle. Warner and Company Distillers, Peoria, Illinois, and it's got the lion on it. Lion face. All right. Yay. That's a nice one. Had the stopper in it. Stopper's broke off, but yeah, it's still full of water. Or gin. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can see that or not very good, but anyway, it's got a got a lion picture on there lion face I like that ball okay I better get out of here it looks like it's getting ready to fall in a little bit okay there's old Bay. she's got her stick over here she likes to chew on those <laughs> oh honey you ought to take a break you've been working hard <laughs> Yeah, and we're trying to keep our property straightened up, aren't we? Yeah. For the winter. Um, did you happen to see that big uh, limb hanging over your ledge? It's uh, a limb that fell. Oh. Yeah. I didn't see that. I'll yeah, have to look at to that. Fall. I shot myself. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to check on Paul one last time. Shadows are getting longer here. Shadows are getting longer. Let's see what's going on over here. Any good news from Paul's hole? Well, what a band. Oh. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of goodies that were unembossed and a oh. lot of broken stuff that was good. <laughs> yeah. That's unembossed. unembossed. Clear. Oh, man. This it's is a, a shame. One of Chicago beers. Oh yeah. Schoenhofen Edel Malt, Chicago. Yeah, unembossed round bottom. Oh, that was cool. Yeah, it said Stone Irish there. whiskey on that Did side. It? Oh, it was painted on. Painted, yeah. But that would have been cool. Yep, a little Irish whiskey. Oh I'm man. On a jug here. There's. Are you good? There's stuff under here, but there's a jug under there, but I can't get it. Oh, <laughs> it's way under there. This one here, I might be able to get it. Okay. I see the handle. A nice applied lip, round bottom ginger ale bottle there. Look at that. It was that amber. That's probably what we're hitting. White rock. Oh, this is a little cute one. White I'm rock. Cold. Is it? Here it comes. Hey, all right. That is a nice one. Nice little one. It sure is. Yeah. I like that. Nice brown, like All a half right. gallon. <laughs> it sure is. That's a good one. It's nice. Look at that. Nice hand thrown pottery jug. The handle on it. All right. Well, at least that's a good find. Yeah, I'm kind of giving up on that lower area. I, okay. I'm finding pretty far under there. But yeah. I was just going to try my luck with yep. a little bit up here. Okay, I think I'll hang out here while you're, while you're doing that. That clear jar there is nothing on it. It's cracked. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it looked like one of them Sinclairs from Iowa. Oh. Yep. I hit a real nice uh, Warner and Company gin from oh, Peoria. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Another jug. <laughs> That area don't look as good as over here, so maybe once you get done with that, you know. That's a boss, what's it say? Hey, is it? Oakford and Fauna Stock. Okay. That's all it says. That's a Peoria. Is it? Yeah, that's oh, from Peoria. Shit, that's correct. Uh-oh, energy level. All right, well, our battery went dead on us. And was able to charge it just a little bit, so I don't know how long this will last, but 
me show a couple things Paul hit here. Real cool uh, stone lintel piece, like probably off a mantle or fireplace. He had a broken uh, Pikes Peak flask. Said old rye on it. Man, he's hitting a lot of stuff now. Yep, Pikes Peak old rye. That's 1860s. Nice five gallon salt glaze cobalt crock broken. Sawyer's egg sours. I gotta yeah. go fast because I'm about to get caved in. Oh, I know it. Oh, let's Catch see. see. Get a druggist from Rock Rockford, John R. Porter. Plate, hit a bone toothbrush. That's pretty cool. Did hit that. Hit a little miniature teapot. It's got this spout chip on it. Clear sauce. Nothing oh, yeah. on it, but it's clear. Oh, okay. Yep. Cup of sauce. Yep. He's hit a couple uh, Larkins down here. Hey, there's one of them flasks. Oh, cool. Burly. A Burly. It's got the paneled yeah. shoulders on Finally it. Finally got a whole one. Yeah, those are kind of nice. Look at that. A little half pint. It says Burly on the bottom. It's got panels around the shoulder. Um, can't remember what else he's hit here, but anyway, there's a lot of stuff back up in there. Oh, hey, it is a Wyeth. Oh, it's a Wyeth? At least it's a Wyeth. Well, good. At least it's embossed. Nice amber one. Yeah, nice hand-blown Wyeth and Brother, Philadelphia. It's embossed. Might be hitting a... Paul's hit a lot of stuff today that could have been really Aww. good. Oh, Got the part of the label on yep. it. Blossom pickles. Oh. Sweet, sweet pickles. I wish it was whole. But... Blossom sweet pickles, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. That's a big layer, though. A good oh, layer right here. It's just real loose. Sure does look like it. At least it's not very deep. You won't get yeah. caved in much on. It's pretty loose up material. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I bet it'll run out any second now, but at least I wanted to record what I could here. He's still got some good area back over here to go, this blob beer. You could come back over to this side maybe and dig some of this. I want to see what this stuff is. Yeah, I think I will. Yeah, and then you can come back over there. Man, it's just bottle after bottle, oh, isn't it? Oh, it's chips. Oh, it's one of them. Columbia. Oh. Quart size Isn't clear. that a shame? Columbia, dang it. Yeah, that would have been a nice oh, well. one. Columbia. Well, got a hole in the back. It's probably worth keeping. We can save it. Display from the front, anyhow. No idea what that was. Pitcher. I don't know what that was. Hmm. There's a jar. Any more. ideas? Nothing on oh, it. Oh, <laughs> the blank. It'll turn amethyst though. Yep. Boy, you definitely got the trash in there, man. Oh, Lots of stuff. Sun's going down. We're just winding down. I want to try this one last time to come over here and see where Paul's at. Nothing. Okay. Boy, it's hard to know it's where hard to, to leave stop. An area when there's it is. <laughs> But yeah, it's falling in. The batteries, They're slick. He's got a whole pile of them here. That neat brass. Broken milk. Yep. Mm mm. Yeah. Boy, look at that! It just keeps going. Solid trash. Yeah. Wow. That's big. <laughs> there. This is the best For every ball I pull out, I'm going to get caved in on another few feet. Yeah. <laughs> Unembossed slick. Oh. Hand blown bottles. 1890s, 1905 era. Boy. A really nice layer there. It's just going far away. Yeah. There's a big, big medicine. Oh, got Probably a, a hood. But... Yeah, but see what it is. 
haven't seen one for a while. Yeah, it's a good. I can see it. Okay. Well, it's, it's a big medicine. Way oh. back in here. Here it is. <laughs> the tunneling. Got to pull out a hood and start to drill. Yep. It's cracked. Oh. <laughs> well. Monkey, monkey shines here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, you getting ready to fall? That's the high part. I don't want that to fall. Yeah. Yeah, that's ours for real. I guess that means I'm done tunneling. Yeah, we'll try over here. Alright. Well, I got the camera here. Um, I'll try to move some of this stuff back here for you. You want me to start over here a yeah. little low? And, yeah. See what's in there. It's a little better looking material. Yeah. Oh, that old hard stuff. Not as much in that. Well, we'll right just... in there looks good though, up above that. Yeah, right up in there looks real juicy. Yeah, it sure does. Right? This whole area here. Yeah. I'm just gonna sit right here for a minute and see what see what transpires. That's why I'm clear drum room. Not the little clear jars. I'll turn it off. Slick. Yep. Whoa. Lots of slicks. Well, hand blown and mold though. No ketchup to add to the Boy, collection. Lots of ketchup. <laughs> Nothing on Nothing it. Nothing on it's one oh, of them you're kidding. paneled hinds, unembossed. Yeah, an unembossed hind. <laughs> I need all the cream and nothing on it. Shouldn't go that way, I should go this yeah, way. Yeah, there you go. Some kind of a, another unembossed Nothing. medicine. You want to switch wow. it, I'll use the camera and you dig. Man, I'm telling you. That's, no, I, I know how it is. Huh? Last trip, I think. Yeah. Alright, let's see what the beer is. I mean, it's probably a slick. It's and a it slick. is. Oh, you're kidding. No, wait, this. wait. It is embossed. Is it? It's a Born and Company Columbus. Oh, okay. Almost well. <laughs> the same as a Hoss. Yeah. <laughs> Not much better. Yeah. Though. Same difference. <laughs> same difference. The most common blob beers, but hey, at least it's a blob if beer. If it's from out of state, then it'll be embossed. Yeah. Wow! Oh, hey, there's Ooh, a Gilka. All right. <laughs> I'll take the Gilka. Yeah, yeah, just a little one. It's a controlled cave in. Just found a nice uh, J Gilka Kumo bottle. All right, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's. That looks pretty good. All right, man. Big thirty dollar bottle, thirty five. Yeah, that's pretty. That's gonna be nice. Look at all them bottles up in there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah. If I can control it a little bit. Yeah, it might keep it up there, but. <laughs> There's that insulator. Oh. Looks like a petticoat or something. Kimming gray. Yeah. layers can turn into real good real fast. They sure can. So you gotta check them. Anytime there's that much trash in there, there's a good chance of there being something good. It sure is fun though, seeing all that stuff. That's gonna fall in and hit me in the head. Yeah. Whiskey bottle up there. Little 
Oh, it's got salt the shaker or something. Top chip on it. Chip is still a keeper. Right? Yeah, put a lid on it. No fun watching Paul and digging over there. I'm about tired. Yeah. Sun's going down. We've got about another 10 minutes maybe. Is that a big Garrett and Company sticking out there? Might be. Tall, slender like a Garrett. Yep, Virginia Is Dare. It? All right. That's pretty bold in Boston. Yeah, again. well, good. That's actually the first one today I hit. Yeah, I haven't hit one today either. Yeah. It don't look great right there, so I may yeah. not touch it. I may just. Maybe do that section yeah good idea all right i think i'm gonna run over there and mine finish mine up real quick before it gets dark and cold well i can feel that it's like the timber somebody just turned the heat off man yep. you feel that it's just the cold coming out now it sure is all right before i went over to check on paul pull out a jug but it's got the handle broke but my best find is really cool. It's a Hutch Clinton Bottling Works, Clinton, Illinois. And that's the first one that we found. So that's actually a really scarce bottle. Clinton Bottling Works, nice Hutch. Also got a really good uh, Bonnie Brothers, Louisville, Kentucky, little half pint hand blown whiskey bottle with the grain on it. And a food bottle here. And this one's a H. Witchard it says on the bottom, it's a pickle, and a nice amber blob beer. It's an in Schlee and Company, Columbus, Ohio. That's a that's a keeper. A couple fruit jars, ball mason, and one of these clear clear ones, but it's got the panels around the neck. It's really cool. That'll turn amethyst. So I'm going down for one last hit here. It's starting to get a little darker, but I'm going to try to find one more goodie here. All right, I just hopped down in a hole. And my first shovel, I, I hit a really cool bottle. It's a bug bottle from St. Louis. Knocks a bug. Um, I can't read it. It's just a little bit too dark. It says something about the clean insect liquid. The Natural Products Company, St. Louis, Missouri. I'm not sure I got that one. I'm not sure. I like St. Louis bottles. Uh, I got a big collection of St. Louis uh, bottles. And so I, anyway, I, I might have it already. But that's pretty neat. I like it. Either way, it knocks a bug. A bug killer bottle. So I'm gonna put that one up on top before I start digging anymore. So, all right. Let's see. There was a little cave in right in here, so that's where that bug bottle was. Came out of that. It fell in. Paul's finishing up over there. He's in a good, rich layer. Yeah, let's see. I was lucky that one bottle came out of there anyway. <laughs> it's kind of fun. All right, I don't see much else there, so I might turn the camera off. Now there's a couple bottles right up over here. Now one's a broken. I can see a whiskey at the top broke on it. Yep, I'm lost. And that one's got the top broke on it too, so. Let's just leave it until the battery runs out, I guess. <laughs> Which probably won't be long. We charge it up for a little bit. It's got a little bit of Paul digging over there. Oh, slick extract. My layer's not as rich as his, but I'm not complaining. Now, okay, this is probably our last, last shot here. I got some more bottles exposed. I thought I'd go ahead and show these. Oh, hey, it's something. I'm not sure what it is, but it looks good though. Yeah, Dick Brothers, Quincy Brewing Company, Kansas City. All right, yeah, best bottle of the day. One of the last bottles. That's a dandy. Nice, rare blob top beer from Kansas City. Yeah, Dick Brothers. They had a brewery in uh, Quincy, and that's what the QB Company stands for. But this was the Kansas City branch. Dick Brothers. Quincy Brewing Company, I believe, Kansas City. 
and it looks like it's in a big tombstone slug plate. Yeah, nice blob top. That's a good bottle. Woohoo! That really makes my day there. <laughs> yeah, like a 1880s, 1890s bottle. All right, well, that was a surprise. I didn't know that was coming. I just thought it was like a big whiskey or something. There's a little unembossed flask. Oh, man, well, that really helped. I'm going to go check on Paul real quick. I'll pull out a couple more here. Before I... Oops, that's a big hawk wine. Look at that thing. That's whole. I don't know what color it is. Let's see. It's amber, or like a reddish amber. But real nice, big, tall hawk wine. Got an applied top on it. Yeah. Well, there's other bottles sticking out up in there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see them or not. It's like a catch up there. Yep, some of the label. That's a little catch up. All right. I don't know what that is. Uh, it's unembossed. No, it's got something on the bottom. I can't make it out. I'll look at it later. It's getting late. It's getting dark and cold. About time to head for home, but it's hard to quit when you're finding bottles like this. Paul's in the same situation. There's some kind of a big wide mouth jar. All right, I just got to go pick the obvious stuff here and then we will go check on Paul. I'm going to have to call it a day. We're just going to try to save these holes where they don't freeze too bad. We cover them up a little bit, so I need to spend some time covering them. There's another jar. It's, I think it's just part of the label on there. There's an amber back in there. Let's see if I can see that. Oh, it's embossed. Peptogenic milk powder around the shoulder, probably Fairchild. Probably Fairchild Brothers Boston on the bottom, I don't know. I'll look at it later, but all right. Oh man, there's still stuff back in there. Well, I'm just going to have to come to a stopping point here. <laughs> it's really hard to do, though, to tell you. You get a good honey hole like this, you don't want to quit. Normally, if we didn't own the property and we could come back, we would we would definitely just keep on digging, but we know we can come back. Oh, there's another one in vinyls. Cod liver oil bottle. There's a jug sticking out in there. Wow, I can't leave that, can I? Okay, we had a really good day and got safely home. No problems. <laughs> That's always a good thing. And we got our bottles washed up. I'm going to start off with the ones that Paul dug. And um, he did pretty good, but he had a lot of his better stuff, though, was damaged. And, but uh, he still did okay. But anyway, well, let's show what he got, and then we'll go and show the ones that Shelly and I dug. So uh, one of Paul's best ones is a little ink bottle. It was like a uh, pen rest ink. It had like a little sunken spot there. And it was a real nice uh, Sanford's, number five Sanford's, patented 1891 and November 22nd, 1892. So, yeah, that was a real nice one. Sanford's ink bottle with that offset neck out of Chicago. And uh, that one's got a little crack in the lip, but if it didn't, it'd be worth about $30. So, it's still probably worth uh, about 20 bucks. Another one of his better ones is a nice Hutch from H. Quozik. Uh, Bloomington, Illinois with the Navy anchor on it. Real nice, uh, real nice anchor on there with a the mug base, panel base there, you see. So yeah, that's a real nice bottle. That's about a $40 bottle. Nice find, Paul. <laughs> we always like it when we find hutches. We don't find a lot of them. And he also got a real pretty, uh, kind of a yellow amber J.A. Gilka. And it's got the signature on the front, J.A. Gilka, you see. And again, it's got those little guys on the bottom. I always like that picture on the bottom of those. It's really cool. Shelly and I have dug a couple of them, so that was a that was a good. Shelly said she likes them too on there, <laughs> but uh, that's about a thirty-five dollar bottle. Maybe a little better with that color. It's a real nice color. And one of the criers of the day, Paul dug a uh, quart uh, old rye Pikes Peak flask. It had a prospector on it. Would have said for Pikes Peak, and then on the back it had an eagle, but uh, real nice one. But 
You can see it's slightly chipped, so <laughs> too bad. That was for 1860s there. So we are hitting some older stuff in there. And a beer bottle from Peru, Illinois. Pretty common one. Peru Beer Company. Peru, Illinois. Nice one though. Pre-prohibition. And another one that we find quite often is a Terre Haute Brewing Company. From Terre Haute, Indiana. That one's hand blown. Hand finished lip on there. And uh, these are pretty common. About ten bucks a piece on those. Real nice pretty green uh, whiskey bottle. Uh, blown in a paste mold. It's got some nice iridescence on that. It's a real pretty bottle. Unfortunately, it's got a lip chip, but it's still a pretty bottle. It's got an applied lip on there, so it's probably a little older, 1890s. But uh, yeah, nice, nice old whiskey there and a pretty color. You don't see those very often. And this is a nice bottle from Bloomington Heberlings. They put out a lot of different patent medicines and flavoring extracts and things of that nature. It says Bloomington, Illinois, right on it. That's one of their older ones. It's hand blown. That's about a $20 or $25 bottle there. We haven't found very many of them. We're digging not real far from Bloomington, and yet we don't really find all that many Bloomington bottles as you would think we would. I apologize for our windows fogging up here. It's warm. I've only got single panes in this one because I had I took off my storm windows for taking pictures. I like to be able to clean my windows off and uh, take pictures and when it gets this cold it's down around 19 degrees so it fogs up a little bit I apologize of course you might say I'm all full of hot air well, that's probably true too so the two factors combined it uh, that's just the way it is so we'll draw a little smiley face on here how's that yeah wish everybody a Merry Christmas <laughs> this is Christmas Eve so we're going to try to get this out if we can and wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. Alright, back to our bottles here. A couple Royal Purples. Shelly and I dug a couple of the little bigger size that just bought them embossed from Lawton, Michigan. So at least we know where they're from. But this is the ones you normally see, these little small ones. Royal Purple. And it's just like the little Welch's grape juice. And those are real nice little bottles. They will turn purple. So it's kind of cool. I play on words, you know, purple bottles, royal purple. And those are from the early 1900s, and they're $15 or $20 a piece. And an Amber Reich Brewing Company beer, Springfield, Illinois. And you don't see as many of the amber ones as you do aqua. So that was a pretty nice bottle. It's about a $25, $30 bottle there for Paul. Reich beer. All right, that's pre-prohibition, 1912 era, and a nice little ironstone, real heavy, thick uh, ironstone china creamer, old dairy creamer, milk creamer, on their table. That's a cute little thing, and those were popular in 1890s, 1910 era. It'd be worth 15 or 20 dollars, and you got three Virginia Dare bottles. They all say Garrett and Company, Virginia Dare, Norfolk, Virginia. And uh, see, you got two big ones and one little smaller size there. So those are nice. Those will all turn amethyst, and they're worth about 30 bucks a piece. A pair of blob top beer bottles. Two of the most common blob top beers you'll see. I'm not trying to run them down, but just telling you the facts. One's a Hoster on the right there, and the other one on the left is a Born and Company. I can see that a little bit better here. Born and Company, Columbus O. And they were EHE Co. That's Edward H. Everett Company. That's out of Newark, Ohio. Real popular glass works there. And these are from the 1890s to 1908 era. Um, and they're probably worth about $15 or $20 a piece. And there's a pair of uh, Caldwell Syrup Pepsins. A smaller size and a big size. And the only one that's missing, there's a little wee sample size bottle, about three inches tall. But uh, we seem to find a lot of those in there because I guess we're close to Monticello, uh, Illinois. And well, let's see what else we got here. Paul got three jugs that he cleaned up. And they're, they're nice. He's got uh, a gallon size one and then probably a half gallon. And then a real nice earlier style beehive jug, brown. Uh, with an applied handle. So, yeah, he, he got three jugs. Yeah, a Columbia jar. 
We don't find too many of those. It says Columbia on the front. And unfortunately, it's got like a hole, a big hole <laughs> in the back, but at least it'll display good. We do find the lids. Don't see any right here handy, but we do find the lids for them. I think it was patented 1898. And uh, another, another beer. Boy, he had a lot of beers. And Shane Hoffman Edelmalt from Chicago. And uh, that one's probably from around 1912. It's a machine made bottle though. <clears throat> but nice bottle. It's 15 or 20 dollars. This is a shame. It was a nice straight sided coat from Decatur and it's kind of a greenish aqua. Almost green color. Boy, that'd have been nice. But anyways, you can see it's just the bottom part, but it'll make a nice glass. We cut that off there. Nice, nice glass for somebody. We'll start working on that maybe at some point. There's a round bottom ginger ale bottle, and it's got an applied tapered collar on that. And uh, no name on it. It's still pretty cool. You got a bone toothbrush. It's probably got some name on it, but I can't decipher it. It's kind of rough shape, been in some rust there, but now we're starting to finally find some toothbrushes. <laughs> I said something about it the other day, and we're not finding many of them, but anyway, those bring about $20 a piece. Here's a woman's hair piece. Looks like that's got something up. That was just the backing there where the little thing was that goes in your hair. But it's, it's made out of tortoise shell, like a, a celluloid. Okay, made out of celluloid. A little porcelain drawer pull. Came off the front of a drawer somewhere. It was real nice. And a little doll. Looks like a boy doll. He's been in some rough, crusty places. He's been playing out in the dirt. It's where he's been. Naughty boy. But he lost his arms and his legs, so he can't do too much damage. He can't go very far, can he? So we always save our arms and legs, try to put them together. And Paul got a nice little assortment of ink bottles. We got three cone inks there, an aqua one and two clears. And another little round and then a square. Most of them are embossed. That one's a, I just can't see it, Carter's. That one's I think another Carter's and that one's a, a Sanford's. So, and that one's a Sanford's, which that's two of the most common ones we find. Sanford's, Carter's, and, and the other one's diamond ink. And just some other odds and ends. You got an amber dioxygen there, and here's a little four, four-sided, four-lobed uh, uh, pickle bottle or olive bottle, I guess you might say. It's a cool little light bulb. It's got the little nipple on the top there. As you see, it's an older little light bulb. I don't know if that's still got the filaments in. It looks like it's still got the filaments intact in there. Might even work. But anyway, that's a little baby bottle there sitting in. It does say Hygia. When Paul dug that, I was wondering, I thought, it looks like a Hygia. And then we couldn't find any embossing on, but lo and behold, it is Hygia. Baby nurser bottle. And a clear pickle there. Amber uh, Wyeth and Brother. Got a little cobalt there. He's got a couple little drugstore bottles. One's from uh, Rockford, John R. Porter and Company Druggists, Rockford, Illinois. One of the most common drugstore bottles, the most common bow. From Rockford we did a lot of digging up there and found out a whole bunch of those if anybody needs any Rockford druggists you let me know I'll hook you up all right there's a Cockerell's drugstore from Houston Texas and unfortunately it's got a hole in it but it's got a real pleasant smell like lemon lemony smell there's a little half pint whiskey flask with nice panels on the shoulder it says burly on the bottom burly flask how about that? And there's a Larkin and Company. Nice little Larkin Company bottle. There's a slick Worcestershire sauce. A couple Whitmers, one clear and one aqua. And there's a little, I don't know what that is, Armor and Company Packers, Chicago. A little dried beef or something was in that, beef bouillon maybe. A couple other little bottles, but all right, that's about it. I'm going to. Go ahead and take these down and put up the ones that uh, that Shelly and I dug that day. So we'll be right back. And here's what Shelly and I got. 
that day here, you know, a couple days ago. So, anyway, let me get right into them because I'm losing battery, I'm losing daylight. So, our first one here, a bug killer bottle. It says Noxabug, the clean insect liquid, the natural products company, St. Louis, Missouri. And that's a fairly scarce hand blown uh, bug killer bottle. And uh, it's hand blown. It's from early 1900s, and that's probably about a $25 bottle. Or, like I said it's fairly scarce. And an Inchley and Son, uh, Columbus, Ohio, blob top beer bottle. That one, uh, it's pretty hard to find that in amber. I've dug quite a few of them aqua, but that's pretty nice. It's got a real nice picture on it. You can see with the lions on there, with the crest, and that's about a $30 bottle anyway, in that big size. And uh, there's a Woner and Company Distillers, Peoria, Illinois. I, I just really like that bottle because it's got the lion face on there. See that? Woner and Company. And it's a hand-blown uh, dry gin bottle. And uh, that's probably about a $50 bottle. Those are hard to find. Uh, real nice one there from 1890s, uh, 1905 period. And our best bottle of the day, without a doubt, is a real scarce uh, Dick Brothers QB Company, which stands for Quincy Brewery, uh, out of Kansas City, Missouri. It's got a big arch tombstone slug plate, nice sunken bottom, and it's a blob top bottle. No name on the back of it, but it looks to be in really good shape. Big quart size blob top beer from 1890s, and uh, that was a that was a real good bottle. I'm not sure what it'll bring. I think the last one I had, I got over 200 out of it, so that's probably a $250 bottle anyway, right there. So, yay! <laughs> that's a nice one. And another rare one we got was a uh, nice Hutch. Our first Hutch from Clinton, Illinois. It's Clinton Bottling Works, Clinton, Illinois. A uh, real nice one. Still got the Hutch and some stopper in it. Uh, so, I was really glad to get that one. Not sure if I want to sell that one or not, but if I do, it's probably a $50 bottle since it is hard to find. The Aqua Crown Top, you can see the Hutchinson stop, Stopper bottle from 1890s versus the Crown Top, which came in, they patented it in 1892, but uh, a lot of these Crown Tops were used all the way up, well, still into modern times, but these are both hand-blown bottles. One's Aqua and one is clear. You can see the size difference and a little bit of the shape. Uh, the aqua in here is a lot harder to find. Uh, it's got a bruise on the back of it or it would be a pretty decent model, but the clear one there it's worth about thirty dollars. And uh, they're from the early 1900s. Amber bottle there is a peptogenic milk powder bossed around the shoulder. It's got a threaded lip but it's an old bottle from Fairchild Brothers and a little half pint Bonnie Brothers from Louisville. I apologize, I'm moving quick. I'm losing my light though and my battery's about to run out and I need to get these finished. We're gonna go to church right away, so got a New Year's Eve service. Bonnie Brothers with a little grain on it. It's a hand blown bottle, a little half pint. That's a, about a $30 bottle, nice one. And we come down here Kind of unusual, we got a, a drugstore bottle from Dubuque, Iowa, G.A. Grimm Red Cross Drugstore, 784 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa. And uh, it's a hand blown bottle, but it's from around 1910, I guess. And uh, you don't find many Dubuque drugstore bottles, so that's a decent bottle. It'd be in the $25 range. Nice green hand blown, uh, probably a Scotch whiskey bottle with applied top but uh, I think they made them all the way up to 1910 but it is a nice pretty bottle and we usually get 10 or 15 bucks out of those when they're playing. Dr. King's new discovery for coughs and colds. It's still got the cork down in there. You can see it's H.E. Buckland. They made electric bitters and Dr. King's new life pills and this is a little later bottle from probably after 1906. The ones before that they'll say uh, Dr. King's new discovery for consumption. So this one's from probably around 1908, 1912 and they're worth 20 bucks. 
And the beer bottle from Chicago, Hen and Gabler Brewery, Chicago. Unfortunately, it's got a big crack in the lip, but we kept it anyway, brought it home. And uh, most Chicago beers are not all that good, but some of them are, some of the older ones especially. Uh, but I have seen that one before. All right, an amber, uh, dark amber, almost a red amber uh, whiskey bottle. And it might bring $20 because it is such a dark reddish amber color. And it's hand blown and turned into mold, spin, spin mold. This hand blown medicine bottle, National Remedy Company, New York. Shelly found that one in the dirt. <laughs> nice little bottle. There were various medicines they used in those, and it's a pretty common bottle. It'd be worth a few dollars. And a common green semi blob top, little ring top mineral water bottle. Find those in 1890s all the way up to 1912. Uh, real popular. It would have been labeled only. And again, that one was similar to, to this whiskey and similar to this uh, wine bottle. These three all were uh, called paste mold blown in a, a, they were spun in the mold after they were blown, so there's no, you won't see no mold seams, you just see some lines going around horizontally around the glass. So those are three examples of uh, bottles that were spun in the mold. Actually four, because I think this one is too, maybe. Yeah, it looks like it was too. So, yeah, four right there, I didn't even realize that. Alright, little pint fruit jar, economy. It's dated 1903 on the bottom. See from Kerr Glass Company, 1903, Portland, Oregon. And those are nice, they turn amethyst. Alright. And a big hawk wine bottle there, pretty common. You know, it's kind of hard to sell those, but that one is a nice clean one. It's a little small size Abilena. This is Abilena on the bottom, it was a mineral water bottle. Also with hand blown and mold, still got a little wire wing around the neck. Maybe that was part of the thing that held the cork down, I'm not sure. Maybe about $15. There's three of the jugs we got. Shelly's still washing up three more. We got six good jugs. So uh, it was a day of jugs in the jug dump. <laughs> uh, anyway, she's got a couple more. She's brought over here. I'm going to show those. There they are. There's a couple. This one over here, the handle come off of that, but nevertheless, we got the handle, so we can put the handle on that one. I'm going to count that thing. So, anyway, a couple other little small ones there, a little white one, a few other little junkers there we got. But, all right, let's finish up here before the battery runs out. Here's a real nice uh, stoneware cheese jar. Before and after, full cream cheese, guaranteed by John G. Neumeister. 154 South Water Street, Chicago. That's pretty cool. And it's definitely cool. Look at that. Keep cool. <laughs> Keep cool. So, yeah, that was nice. And I think we've got a lid for that someplace. It's got a lip chip here, but the lid covers that. But, um, yeah, that was a nice old jar from turn of the century. It's about 110, 120 years old. Stoneware jar from Chicago. And uh, there's a swirl shoulder whiskey, three-piece mold, oh, three-piece mold there. Unembossed, but they're nice. They always turn amethyst. Oh, square pickle bottle, hand-blown. Here's a little medicine bottle. It says Peoria on the base there. We find those a lot in the area there. Just a medicine bottle. A couple amber vinyls. One you see is a dark amber, and the other one's a little lighter. We got three of them little amber hand blown bottles. I think they got a glass mark on the bottom, something. I'm not sure what they say. Tell you the truth, I forgot. Can't see. <laughs> Don't ever get old, folks. Can't see as good as I used to without my glasses. That's a nice gravel springs company from Jacksonville, Illinois. The bottle was aqua, it was broken, but at least we did get a stopper from it. And uh, those are pretty scarce. Alright, and this is, I'm not sure what that is. Just a nice little piece of metal with a sunburst on it. Kind of, kind of cool looking. A couple ink bottles. Paul beat us out on the inks. That's all we got. It's a couple there. Got a 
liners. We dug a lot of fruit jar. We had just one, just a sample one. We got a consolidated fruit jar lid there with the CFJ co monogram. Those are a lot older. Those those were probably made in the 1880s. And there's a nice uh, gas light fixture. It was an arm came off the wall there and had probably would have had the lamp on the end here. So come out pretty good. Here's that tea leaf plate. Old ironstone china, real heavy. They call that tea leaf. Usually has a brown ring around the rim. It's got that tea leaf design on there. That was popular in the 1870s, 1880s. This one was made in Alfred Meakin, England. They usually always got a nice Mac maker's mark on it. We could clean that up a lot better. Like I said, with our cleaning, if you're just watching this, uh, we just did a video on uh, how to clean bottles. Just basic stuff. Nothing spectacular, but um, that will clean up a lot better. And just a few other little things. This was some kind of a real cool looking jar. I think it was an all right, but I'm not I'm not sure. Maybe some of you fruit jar guys can help us out on that. But I believe that might have been all right. Has a little dimple there, ground ground lip. But yeah, it's too bad. Would have been a nice jar. But all right, well, anyway, that's it. We Thank you for watching. We hope it hadn't too long, and we wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. I hope you're staying safe and be careful. If you're out on the roads, if you have to travel, uh, be safe, be careful. And we're going to be praying for all of you, and we thank you again for your thoughts and your prayers uh, for Shelly and I, both in our family, as uh, Justin passed away recently, and her, her son, yeah, my stepson. But we're with you in, your, in our thoughts and prayers, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. And we want to thank you if you've subscribed. Uh, we really do appreciate that. We hope that we can uh, keep in touch with a lot of you. We'll try to leave our email address again where you can get a hold of us. And I'm a little behind on things with the Christmas rush, you know, with eBay and everything. We sell our bottles on eBay through Digger Dave's Bottles and Treasures. And Paul's eBay store is called Look What I Dug. And somebody mentioned that they were having trouble finding it. And I, my username on there is Digger Dave B. And I just spell out the word Digger and then my name, Dave B. Digger Dave B. That's my username. But anyway, we uh, thank you very much. And we're always looking for places to dig. We, of course, we like that jug dump we dig in which we just showed but we're also always looking for privies that's really what we enjoy doing is digging old outhouse privy pits behind houses that uh, were built before 1890 usually but uh, we go all the way up to about 1915 so all right well if you know anything get a hold of us and uh, any thoughts and suggestions we always appreciate those so all right have a good christmas and uh, we hope we can get something out before the new year, so I'm not going to say Happy New Year yet, so we'll see. <laughs> All right, God bless you.